This summer, YouTube deleted thousands of channels with right-wing and conspiracy themes. It got me thinking, can YouTube do this? Don't we have a right to free speech on YouTube? That's what we're gonna explore on today's video. I'm gonna take you through a history of free speech and then we're gonna answer that question. Don't we have a right as creators to free speech on YouTube? All right, let's hit this. Hey creator, I'm Ian Corzine, your social media lawyer, and on this channel, I give you the advice you need to succeed on social media. Today we're talking about free speech on YouTube. Do you ever wonder if YouTube has the legal right to silence creators who wanna send out unique messages on their YouTube channels? You know, on one hand, you may think, of course they should have the right. We don't want crazy channels, channels that spread bigotry and hate out there for people to watch and to be able to absorb. On the other hand, you may think, listen, I know flat earthers are crazy, but don't they have a right to say what they wanna say on YouTube? Don't you have a right to be stupid? And that some of you are worried that if you stop free speech on YouTube, is that gonna stop free speech on all of social media? Well, you're not alone. Free speech has been debated time and time again for many hundreds and hundreds of years. It started way back when, when the ancient Greeks developed the concept as a fundamental principle of democracy. Leaders developed laws and other policies that allowed its citizens to openly discuss politics, religion, and to voice their concerns about their government. The concept that free speech might be an actual fundamental right stemmed from the Magna Carta, which was drafted in 1215 by the Archbishop Canterbury. It was basically a declaration of rights for Englishmen. While it didn't expressly mention the right to free speech, it provided for due process. It allowed Englishmen to complain about their grievances. It even gave Englishmen the ability to recover money for some of the damages that were inflicted upon them. Another document which really established the right to free speech in our society was the Massachusetts Body of Liberties, which was adopted in 1641. It provided for the right of due process, the right of a jury trial, and the right of its citizens to complain about grievances that they experienced on a day-to-day -day basis. And then in 1787, the American Congress adopted the Constitution. And this was the groundbreaking document which really provided for the right of free speech, certainly in America and also in the world. In this document, American founding fathers wrote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech. Since this time, courts have interpreted the right to free speech as a right guaranteeing citizens to be able to express their ideas, express information, and express their own opinions without government censorship. So freedom of speech is actually a limitation on the government. It is a prohibition on the government from limiting the messages of its citizens. Therefore, at least in America, you're allowed to use offensive words, words that people don't wanna hear in order to convey your political message. You're allowed to use symbolic speech, and that speech might be like symbolically burning a flag to memorialize your hate of war. You have the right not to speak. You have the right not to salute the flag or not to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. And you have the right to do political speech. In other words, you could contribute money to a certain candidate's political campaign to communicate your speech, your expression of a political belief. However, your right to freedom of speech is not unlimited. There are certain exceptions to the general rule that you can say whatever you want to say in society. So for example, you can't use words that would incite others to do harm to other people. You could not yell fire in a crowded theater. You can't make or distribute obscene materials in society. You can't lie to government investigators or the court system. You can't run dishonest advertisements and you can't advocate drug use in a school forum. The key takeaway from this is that freedom of speech is a limitation on our government, on our society. It allows us to generally say what we wanna say unless our words have a threat of imminent harm to other people. Generally, again, we don't have the right to free speech in private places, in the private sector. 
So we can't go into someone's home or their private place and say whatever we want to say. We can't say whatever we want to say in a workplace environment. In other words, people who are in their private spaces or employers have the right to limit your free speech when you're in their home or you're in their office. So in this vein, YouTube is a private business. It allows almost anyone to be able to upload basically whatever content they want free of charge. It does not owe us anything. It does not owe us a right to allow us to freely express ourselves in any way we see fit. YouTube's limitations on free speech are right there on the YouTube website. You can't publish on YouTube pornography. You can't do videos that encourage people to hurt themselves or hurt other people. Of course, YouTube bans hate speech or other graphic or violent content. You can't threaten or harass people on YouTube and you can't impersonate them or perpetrate some type of fraud or mislead them with your videos on YouTube. So now you know that freedom of speech is basically a limitation on the government. The private sector is not obligated to give us free speech. And YouTube, of course, is in the private sector. So they're not obligated to give us free speech either. But there's a larger question. And in my opinion, the question is, should YouTube be able to limit our voices, the creator's voices in society any way it wants to. Given that the internet and YouTube is now our chief communicational tool, not just in America, but worldwide, shouldn't we be allowed to express our opinions however we want to, just like we could in years past on a street corner? To put it in analogy form, is YouTube kind of like a newspaper, a publisher of information, or does it function in society more like a microphone, amplifying our voices? All right, ponder that and let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you're concerned about government censorship, you've got to see what they're doing in Europe. Have you heard of Article 13, which has now been renumbered Article 17? It's going to place a lot of limitations on free speech. If you want to learn more, watch my video right there. If you're new to the channel, come join us. I'd love to see you here. Hit the like button, consider subscribing, and join us for more discussion on iancorzine.com. All right, that's enough for today. We'll see you next time.